Hi, welcome to this tutorial on stationary points. Now suppose we have a graph, okay, and this graph looks like something like this, where it's increasing, turns round, levels off, and starts to decrease, then it levels off and then drops again, decreasing, and then turns round to start increasing again, climbs up, levels off and then starts to increase again. Okay, now imagine this is like a hill, a profile of a hill, okay, and you're going up and down this hill. Now it's going to be pretty steep up through here and then when you get up to here you could take a rest maybe. Why? Because this is going to be flat and you'll be able to rest down here because this too is a flat spot and down here up here as well. All of these points that I've just outlined are points where the gradient is flat. Let's just highlight them and these points are called stationary points. Okay. Now the special names given to these stationary points. This type of stationary point where we're increasing, level off and then start to decrease is called a maximum turning point. So I'll label that a maximum turning point. Okay, and this one down here, we come down here, the gradient is decreasing, it levels off and then starts to increase again. So this type of turning point or stationary point is called a minimum. So I'll label that in as a minimum. Now these stationary points aren't turning points because the curve doesn't turn round on itself, okay? Unlike these two. These particular, particular stationary points are called points of inflection. So we'll just label those as points of inflection. But nonetheless, all of these are stationary points it's where the gradient is equal to zero. Now how do we find the gradient on any curve? Well it's given by dy dx. So at stationary points dy dx is going to equal zero. And this is the first stage in trying to find out where stationary points occur on any curve. Now I'm going to do an example so let's just get rid of this one and put on... So I'm going to do an example then. y equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 24x minus 7. This is the equation of a curve and I'm going to try and find the stationary points on it. Now first of all we've got to get the gradient at any point on the curve and that's given by dy dx. So I've got to differentiate this first of all with respect to x. And if I do that I get 3x squared minus 6x minus 24. And we know that at stationary points the gradient will be 0. And that means dy by dx has got to equal 0. So at stationary points dy dx equals 0. Always feel that you should write that statement in. So what's that going to mean? Well it's going to mean that this equation up here is going to be equal to 0. So that will be 3x squared minus 6x minus 24 equals 0. And if I factorise this I notice that 3 is a common factor. So I could pull 3 out and get x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And factorising the quadratic factor in here gives two brackets, an x and an x, a plus 2 and a minus 4. So that means that either the x plus 2 would be 0 or the x minus 4 would equal 0. And this will lead on to x equaling minus 2 or x equaling 4. 
OK, so we have the x-coordinates now of where the gradient is zero. In other words, the x-coordinates of the stationary points. Now, quite often when we're asked to find stationary points, it's not the x values, but it's the coordinates, the full coordinate. That would be the value of x and the corresponding value of y. So in order to find the corresponding value of y that goes with x equals minus 2, I need to substitute x equals minus 2 up into this equation up here. So I'm going to say that when x equals minus 2, y will equal minus 2 cubed, because it says x cubed, then minus 3 times x squared, so that's minus 3 times minus 2 squared, and then minus 24 times minus 2, and then minus 7. And if you work this out, either in your head or on a calculator, you'll get that y equals negative 21. Sorry, I beg your pardon, plus 21. OK? And then moving on, when x is the value 4, by doing a similar thing, substituting x equals 4 into the equation for y, we have 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared minus 24 times 4 minus 7. And again, if you work that out, you should find that you get minus 87. So that means that we have stationary points now, OK? Let's just write this in, therefore stationary points, points at our coordinates, which are x is minus 2 and the corresponding value for y was 21. And we also have another stationary point at x equals 4 and its corresponding value for y was minus 87. OK, so if that were the question, just find the stationary points, this would be our answer. But most questions ask us to go on and describe the nature of the stationary points. By that they mean what type of stationary point this is. Is this? Is it a maximum? Is it a minimum? Or is it a point of inflection? Well, in my next part, I'm going to show you how we determine the nature of the stationary part points. OK? And there's two methods involved. One's called the gradient method, and the other one is the second differential method. And what I'll do, first of all, is I'll show you the gradient method, and then I'll do the second uh, differential method. OK? So I hope you've got that so far, and uh, you can see this, how we get the nature, as I say, in the next part.